And good evening, my lovely Lost Tales, and welcome back to the Blue Rose Respite for my Friday Night Swy stream. Thank you guys for joining me tonight. I hope you're all doing well. It is the start of a weekend, and thank you so much for joining me tonight. I hope all of you have been doing well. I have been greatly enjoying my week off of work uh, to enjoy uh, my extended birthday period. Uh, my birthday was on... Um, uh monday i had a fantastic time and uh, thank you so much for all the birthday wishes i really really appreciate it thank you so much guys and welcome zach the audio wizard great username and thank you so much for the follow you are now one of my lovely lost tales and you're welcome at the blue rose respite anytime take a seat perfect timing we were just getting started tonight but it's so good to see everyone um I have noticed that uh, this past week has been absolutely incredible um, in many, 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 many ways. Uh, firstly, it's I, I was actually I've been listening to you guys, and I was taking time off for myself and learning to relax a little and do nice things for myself because, you know, sometimes I think I deserve it. <laughs> Um, and also, um, I just want to say a huge thank you to everyone who has watched my most recent ASMR tale, uh, featuring Glasha the Greenfire, my beautiful and fearsome orc warrior. I loved making, uh, writing that story. I think Ren Pen knocked it out of the park with the art, and I'm just still blown away by... I think it's almost at 50,000 views in just under a week, which I believe is the fastest or like, like wide, fastest amount of accumulating uh, views for any of my stories. So I just want to say a huge thank you to everyone who's watched it and given Glasha a ton of love. Like you guys have been absolutely incredible. Thank you. <laughs> Glasha's at 47,000 views. <sighs> fuck oh god it's like don't get me wrong i'm absolutely delighted and i'm just so blown away it's just i'm kind of i'm genuinely taken aback just like how like how <laughs> And yeah, absolutely no signs of slowing down. Like, please, if you haven't checked it out already, please do so. Um, but I've also noticed that uh, my number of subscribers I've gained, like, because I hit 25k earlier this month. And now I'm almost at 27. So my next milestone was set for 30. And so I'm thinking I'm going to be doing my next Q&A a lot sooner than I expected. <laughs> Which I, I'm absolutely delighted. Like, I'm... You guys are incredible. Thank you so much. But let us focus and return to the game, shall we? The volley of General uh, Not Sheraton. Four. And so it was that victory was absolute, and cheers were raised for General Not Sheraton. And so, buoyed by respect and admiration, Not Sheraton stood proud to remove the mask to state her true name. Well, had they not accepted her? Had they not thrived by her leadership? Had they not become comrades despite station and masks and nonsense of protocol? And the answer was swift and bewildering, for they had not. And swiftly she was bundled away amid uh, calls of imposter and spy, and other terms she could not know, for she, she did still not know or lay. Actually, that uh, little excerpt is very, very appropriate, considering the quest that we will be going on uh, this evening, I saw this, uh, is going to be the... Um, fuck, what's it called? Uh, wicked Eyes and Wicked Hearts. Firstly, before we get too caught up in that, I will just uh, tick off some more things at the war table. So let's head back there first. Is it this way? I need to remember how to get my way around Skyhold. I'll be back in a second, Solas. Mm. What's the chance say about this? I never paid attention. Yeah, I was just having a little bit of a talk about Glasha and just kind of gushing over how incredible you guys have been. Because I was saying to um, uh, Scarlet the other night uh, when she and I were chatting, catching up, like, you know what? At, like, 
it just shows you guys have exquisite taste. Just mwah, good. <laughs> Like of, for, of all my characters that um, like blow up for lack of a better word and gain a ton of views in a short period of time, the giant powerful orc warrior who is both dominant but also gentle and understanding and just passionate about everything that she is. You know what? Kudos everyone. Kudos, you have good taste. Hayden Park, thank you so much for your 24 month resub at tier three. Guess he's had a Twitch account for two years now and two years of absolutely incredible support. Thank you so, so much, Hayden. I really, really appreciate it. You've supported me on across numerable platforms and I really, really appreciate it. Thank you so, so much for the two years of support. Okay, Josephine, how are you, my sweetie? I, I know she's not a legion, but anyway. Foundation cracks, nesting animals, and miles from any centers of civilization. The staff must make it presentable if we're to receive any visitors of distinction. It certainly wouldn't do for the Inquisition to appear overly shabby. We've only just now convinced everyone we are precisely what Deiras requires. The mages are showing great trust in you. They need to feel safe here. If they don't, yeah, we need to build up our fortifications a bit more. After that battle with Corypheus, how could anyone not feel perfectly safe? I can't stop dwelling on the day he attacked our camp. Do you know who first left to arms? Our workers. They were so proud of our cause. Corypheus simply cut them down. So much screaming after that first battle fight. Oh. So many people turned to ash. Yeah, we could have saved more lives. I got a bit clumsy. Too many good people to that monster. I'm sure they'll find rest with the Maker. Well, before I return to my duties, Allow me to congratulate you on your appointment as Inquisitor, my lady. I will now bring diplomatic issues to your attention, and I'm more than happy to help with any situations that arise. I'm sorry, Josephine, I'm not ro romancing you in this run. You don't have to be so formal just because I'm Inquisitor now, Josephine. Our allies and guests should see you treated with every courtesy, Inquisitor, especially considering the newness of your office. Fortunately, after your courage at Haven, it's no difficult task to do so. I love you. There's just way too many amazing characters in this game that I just... Can't I romance all of them? Please? Um, normally I would say... Uh, like, I would love to flirt with Josephine, but given that in this game you're limited to only having one all the way through romance option, um, Dorian is an exception because um, later stuff is revealed about his preferences, so you can flirt with him if you are a female uh, playing a female character without uh, worrying about muddying things up as far as I know. <laughs> like... There's some things that I've said on streams, I'm just like, I love you. Just, yeah, feel free to clip that if you like. Okay, protect Clan Lavellan. Commander Cullen, our troops made good time to Wycombe and enter the valley in force. The Dalish were greatly surprised to see Inquisitor soldiers coming to fight on their behalf, but when we broke the line of attacking bandits, the Dalish were quick enough to fight by our side. Our combined forces killed most of the bandits and drove the few survivors away. I doubt they will be coming back, though they will indeed well armed. Duke Antoine of Wycombe uh, offered his gra gratitude for dealing with the bandits and gave his, the Inquisition his hospitality while we were near his city. He has promised to ensure that no further harm comes to the Dalish while they are near Wycombe. Lieutenant uh, Rosalind... Rosalind? That's a cool name. Rosalind Chambertail. Cool, cool, cool. All good. If it was abandoned when we arrived, who named this place Skyhold? Solus says it changed hands so many times, the original builders can't be traced. I read the House of Armitage once built a fortress in the vicinity five ages ago, but the records are lost. Mm. 
All right. Next uh, mission report. The Seven of Nevada. The agent known as uh, Argent infiltrated the Nevadan royal palace and killed Vile uh, Varelius? Varelius. Eliminating several others who she reports were clearly co-conspirators. King Marcus is reported to have awakened as if from a dream. The Inquisition is not connected to any of this, and the King is enraged to have been magically influenced in such a manner. He, uh, he would definitely be more wary of Venatori emissaries in the future. Argent brought back several interesting items that were in Varelius' possession. Ooh, Magister Ice Staff. That could be useful. Okay, truth or dare, the Imperial Court. Ambassador, I very much enjoyed our, your soiree, and I hope to see you at the summer cottage for our picnic luncheon next month. Do not fret about the ghastly things said about your associates. More reasoned heads will prevail, and this foolish gossip will come to nothing. Yours, Duke Cyril. Okay, more influence. Good, good, good. Okay, n not ready for that quite yet. What was the quest that we had to do? Was it that one? I thought it was something to do with Skyhold. Let me just go back for a second to refresh my memory. Phantom, thank you so much. I think this is your first time with us or it's been a while. Either way, welcome back. Uh, Inquisitor's path. Here lies the abyss. Okay, yes. Okay, combat trainers. That's another one that I want to cross off. So let us do that. What's a more comedic war chant? Uh, Emotep. Oh, crap. You know what? That's a good question. I think uh, the one, the war chant uh, Emotep is, depending on how you say it, if it's kind of like a zombie sort of flirt with like Emotep, then it's more comedic. Whereas it's kind of unsettling when a massive crowd of uh, mind control people no are, are doing it and advancing by. towards you. Just I will you know. arrange patrols to ensure it stays that way. Okay. There it is. Specializations for the Inquisitor. I can ensure uh, inst uh, instruction for the legions who want to join, but can we expect the Inquisition to remain a lead Inquisitor to remain a leader while training with a subordinate? She is a figure of inspiration and should rightly be one of, of aspiration. Promoting a specialist from within the ranks seems lacking, but due respect to our people, the needs of the Herald are so specific. I recommend looking outside for the best combat specialist to be found, regardless of their affiliation. From Sir Morris Quartermaster. Uh, the circles may have dispersed, but do we still have our contacts? There are powerful mages, not tied to the, the rebellion, who can offer training. Thank you, Josephine. At your service. I love you. The best of the best have been summoned. Training with these specialists will ensure the Inquisitor's abilities remain at their height. Okay, perfect. And we need our Carnist for Skyhold. Skyhold has incredible potential for runecrafting and mi uh, mastercrafting. I was going to say minecrafting. Mastercrafting smithing. If only we had gifted a gifted mind to gain full benefit. The war and the Venatori have... Uh, claimed many experts, but we have located an arcanist with great skill and a reputation for humbling first enchanters in both Andrastian and Imperial circles. Two um, assassination attempts and at least one explosion have made landholders reluctant to allow her passage through their territory. It will take significant effort to bring her from uh, Tantavale, but this arcanist would be invaluable to the Inquisition. Uh, Cullen, a full return will secure her safety along the Imperial Highway. Okay, secrets way... Uh, Josephine, you've already got stuff to do. Let's send Cullen. Boy need stuff to do. <laughs> the Arcanus has been secured despite great cost, and the concern is more than a few traditional minded mages. She awaits a meeting with the Inquisition in the uh, Inquisition Inquisitor in the Undercroft. I need to slow down while I speak. Uh Shoes of Denaran. Dorian's request, okay. Now that you're in charge, there's something I thought I'd bring up. There are venatory mages out there lurking in the wilderness. This comes as no surprise to you, since you can't swing a dead cat without hitting one of Corypheus's minions. But these particular venatory have additional significance to myself. For one, I know them personally. I would call them friends, except that it would imply I didn't want them dead. Which I do. Since I have an idea of where they might be, thanks to an investi investigation I began before coming south, I thought we could put our heads together and track them down. 
at which point they would sneer at so uh, something at you in Tevinter, uh, and you would be forced to kill them, which makes everyone happy. You for eliminating a potential threat, me for eliminating men and women too stupid and short-sighted to be permitted continued breath. They would be less happy, but who cares about them? Up to you, my lady inquisitor. Dorian. He just has a way with words that I love. Okay, Liliana seems the best fit for this. Uh, let us look into this carefully and quietly. We do not wish to alert the Venatori to our awareness of their existence. Inquisitor. Send you. Oh, thank you for the stretch check. Uh, Hayden. Oh, thank you, thank you. Okay. Let's get some more of these underway. Uh, strike a bargain with merchant princes. Inquisitor, the allied merchants of the monarchy of Antiva have inquired whether they can assist us in any fashion. They could provide us with some of the finest goods in Thedas, a powerful boost to our prestige, and spread our influence north. The merchant princes will also attempt to ensnare us in contracts so convoluted that we will be eternally tied to them. If we are interested, we must send our most skilled negotiators. Our diplomats are well respected, and I feel we can come out ahead of the bargain if we are prepared to commit to it. Uh, from Ambassador Montidier. I've chosen a few dozen diplomats to handle the merchant princes. I will, of course, inspect everything we sign myself. Inquisitor. Okay. Now, the next big thing is um, the masquerade. And we have enough power to do this, so... We'll do that one in a second. We just, I just want to find something else for um, uh, Cullen to do. Uh, that's better for Liliana. Again, Liliana. Okay, this is, seems better. Better for Josephine, though. Anything on Olay that Colin is well equipped for? Hmm, maybe not. That's alright, maybe you can get some more resources for us, Colin? Okay, the Hinterlands is a notable source of Elfridge and Onyx. Inquisition for uh, forces at camp could search for these resources and arra arrange shipment to Skyhold. Inquisitor. Good, good, good. Alrighty then, why don't we try and find this warden then, since we have the power to spare? Actually, you know what? I'm first going to undergo the training for unlocking the new uh, skill set before I go out into uh, out into the fields again, gain experience points, level up, and then I can properly spend my abilities. Hmm. There we go. They've come to teach me their ways. Okay, let's speak to the trainers. I already know which one I'm going to pick. Aaron, Commander Lane. Okay. Um, I could speak to all of them. Uh, so, I believe the options are Fade, or like Fade Magic, Necromancy, and Night Enchanter, I think. Excuse me. Um, so let's speak to all of them. Inquisitor, I heard a tapping. My skills are required. And you are? Speak of Rios Anaxas. I have come from Navarra as a voice for the dead. Welcome them, and they will serve your cause. You'd better clarify. <laughs> of course. I know how this sounds to the uninitiated. I am of the Mortalitasi. 
we tend to those who have passed and revere their lives by honoring them in death. And when the living are threatened, we give the bodies of the dead physical purpose once more. Necromancy, Inquisitor. The dead will serve for you. Hmm. You're saying you can bring the dead back to life? Of course not. The souls of our departed cross the fade to be with the Maker. The body is left empty. Then what is it that you do? In the Grand Necropolis, we would usher in a displaced spirit of the fade, eliminating imbalance. But this is war. Every battlefield has one thing in abundance, death. I turn the bodies of enemies into weapons against them. We do not manipulate the living. We make use of the dead. I'm ready to learn what you know. Then your journey begins as others end. The steps are small, but vital. There is instruction and veneration. Then you'll return. We shall see what this life holds for you. Okay, so that is for the necromancer. Hello. Yes, hello. I am your trainer. Yes? I am your trainer. You said that. Good, because it has been a long journey. The cause is just, and if we don't start soon, you won't have time to learn. <clears throat> I am your trainer. Thank you for coming to train me. What? Oh, yes, of course. You're welcome. Thank you. I was charged with studying the breach and the subsequent rifts to discover how they affected traditional disciplines. I was enthralled. So were the 19 others, I presume. They're dead. They learnt the power, but couldn't wield it. Rift Mage Inquisitor, the forces are incredible. And with training, you will be incredible. I know how not to die, and I can teach it. It's incredible. I would also like to learn how not to die. Tell me why this would best suit me. You are the Inquisitor. And? You deserve power that casts your enemies aside with the abandon of a creative force. Crushes them with your very will. That is the promise. Who better than you? You are the Inquisitor. Alright. Very well. Show me how this should go. It goes places you have been and some you have not. That is necessary, so the price is not paid twice. Follow the instruction and you will know the way. You'll understand the power. Then I'll show you more. After all, I am your trainer. All right, so I was planning on taking the path of the Rift Mage, just because when I play Inquisitors who um, are interested in certain individuals, then I like to have a, a deeper connection with the Fade and with Rifts and stuff, so I like to RP it a little bit in my head, like she's really intrigued by the magic uh, that Solace talks about with being able to work with the Fade and speak to spirits and stuff, and then like how to harness that energy and use it for power. Power. Hold and declare, Inquisitor. What do you mean? I ask your intent. I was summoned to oversee training. And I would know my charge. I am your commander in this matter. Commander Helene. Thank you for coming, Commander Helene. Commander will suffice, recruit. I teach the skills of the Night Enchanter. It is a rank. It is a life. Understanding its hierarchy is the first step. You already know this. You were not made Inquisitor and then taught to lead. I will teach you how to rise to your place. How to join your warriors, spectral blade in hand. How to command the ranks while standing beside them. Are you ready? Who granted your rank? What forces have you served with? I cannot say. Then how do I know you're capable? You know because I have told you. And I will teach you the same authority. I'm ready to learn what you know. Then we will begin the simple steps, recruit. And we shall see what heights you reach. You have a task. A simple construction. Go, learn, and return. Soon you will lead from the front. Soon you will command. Alrighty, so I am going to go with more of the, uh, the Rift Mage. Huh? So for that, 
Um, assemble a tome of rifts, study rift magic, and your trainer will reveal the secrets of the rift magic's uh, mage specialization. Collect tomes from Venatori at uh, Gullinan's Grove. Uh, I cannot pronounce that. And the desolate bank in the exalted plains. Reading can be found uh, among the belongings of followers who share this discipline, or if unavailable, among the wares of the book merchant in Val Royal. Uh, while a mage can only truly uh, specialize in one style, studying others can still be of considerable benefit. Uh, acquire writing of two magic. Okay, I've all already got a good amount of ring velvet, uh, so I need venatory tomes for that. Ah, oh, there, and how's it going? Thanks for my life in Haven. You've all sorts serving now. If that means change, that'll be it. Hell yes. Okay. Um, how am I doing for inventory? Because I got some new stuff recently. That's nice. I think I'll take that. Uh, but the stuff of stasis, I want to give that to Dorian. It doesn't do as much damage as a damage per second but it does have additional benefits so I'm gonna give that to you there we go alrighty um before we because I want to do a little bit of exploring and uh, just muster my strength a little bit before we head out to do uh, one of the big quests Hang on. Okay. Uh, Gunnan's Grove. Sun Devon. Gunnan's Grove. Where the hell is that? I might just run over to the war Inquisitor. table just in case. Or it might be something that we can collect on the way. As we like do other missions. Actually, the Farrakh, North how are things with you? Try to find the maker. Hey. That got a little heated. Are you alright? Well, that depends. How angry is Cassandra? I wasn't trying to keep secrets. I told the Inquisition everything that seemed important at the time. You could have told us about Corypheus sooner. I found out he was involved at exactly the same time you did. Until he showed up at Haven, I thought he was dead. Nothing we saw at the summit made me think he'd been there. I know I need to do better. I'm sorry. You are forgiven. We love you. You shattered quite the collection. Oh, I see there's someone who wants to speak to me outside me. Hello. Inquisitor, Elan Vimar. Honored to represent the College of Herbalists and offer my services as apothecary. I intend to carry on the work of my esteemed colleague, Adan. He thought highly of you. He will be missed. I look forward to working with you. And are you? I wasn't sure what to think of you people, but recent events have put those doubts to bed. All the mundane needs of Skyhold will be well tended. If you note anything special, let me know. I'm here to serve the cause we must. Good plan. Ooh, I can upgrade stuff, maybe? Okay, Chantry Garden, uh, Reverence and Reflection, or... Uh, herb garden, utility and comfort. Well, considering I'm not uh, playing this Inquisitor as being, I am the Herald of Andraste. Let's just go with a nice, straightforward herb garden. Uh, Skyhold garden, where weather grows the simple scent of sprigs and new and furrowed soil. For on the vine are yours and mine, a bounty blessed by honest toil. Though brave in war and ways we are, and wander thus in victory. It's on the vine where yours and mine are graced with health and history. In home and hearth and battlefield, our sustenance is common held. If on the vine are yours and mine, and always there, there we are compelled. 
For turning home is not retreat when home is why we fight at all, and on the vine is yours and mine, entreating in our heart the call. So of the boons you cannot buy, there are but two we are certain of, not on the vine of yours and mine is first the cost of truest love. And that denied of purchase price, we turn our gaze to what's in hand, and of the vine of are yours and mine, to martel from our own land. From the Gardener's Grace, Songs of the Field, collected by Meriton Hellwell. Pretty. And hey, Gumbina, how's it going? Okay, I can't yet plant anything, because I do not have seeds to plant. I will keep an eye out for some. Uh, I'm going to wait until things are looking a little bit nicer in the Grand Hall before passing judgment. Investigate the Western Approach. Scouts are reporting a number of travelers entering, entering the Western Approach. Surprising, uh, right, since the place is a blighted desert with no trade routes. <sighs> More surprising, I no one is not. leaving. It bears investigating. Was trying. Hmm. So, Masquerade is that one. Why don't we go try and find the Warden? So that's another one of the ma major story uh, quest lines. Find the Warden. Hawk has revealed that Corypheus can influence the minds of Grey Wardens. If the Darkspawn bring them under his sway, he'll command a legion of highly skilled warriors. The Inquisition must hunt down Hawk's uh, Grey Warden ally hiding in Crestwood to learn about the other Warden's plans. No one has travelled to or... Um, uh, to or from Crestwood since the breach, and Liliana will send her fastest agents to discover what disaster has rendered it silent. We must ensure that a trap is not waiting for us in Crestwood. I will send scouts to draw command. Even. Hell yes. Only if we have the numbers to defend it. A place like this serves no purpose without enough people to make the running worthwhile. A hastily scrawled note received by Messenger Bird. Inquisitor, Hawk's warden friend is somewhere here. Disappeared before we could talk to him. He's good. Be careful on the road. Lots of undead. People here need our help. Explain more once you're here from Harding. Why don't we venture forth and see if we can find this individual? Uh, undead. Let's take Dorian with us. I'm taking Varric as well because this is tied to uh, Hawk. But actually, no. I'm sorry but let's take Cassandra as well because these two uh, need to patch things up and so I think Dorian and I can help smooth things over. Ooh, Night Kaiju working on a new D&D &D character while watching. She's a profane blood, uh, soul blood hunter with a Hydra Dragon Lich as her patron. That sounds cool. Hmm. Good to see you safe, Inquisitor. We've got trouble ahead. I'm sure it's nothing the Inquisition can't handle. Careful, Your Worship. That optimism might be catching. Are things that bad? Well, that doesn't look good. The sea is on fire. Or smoking. Crestwood was the site of a flood ten years ago during the Blight. It's not the only rift in the area, but after it appeared, corpses started walking out of the lake. You'll have to fight through them to get to the cave where Sir Hawk's Grey Warden friend is hiding. Have any undead attacked the camp? We've had a few shamblers, but most head toward the village below. Maybe someone in Crestwood can tell you how to get to the rift in the lake. Maker knows they'll want help. Good luck, and please be safe. I will do my best.
Oh, look at you all, so dashing. Okay, nothing I can turn in. Let's just switch uh, that quest to that. <coughs> Excuse me. What is it? Oh, thank you for the hydrate to check, Hayden. <laughs> thank you, thank you. I do see that Dorian can level up, which is good. Yes, because he took the path of the Necromancer, which is awesome. And Cassandra is our wonderful Tiddler. Hell yes. Okay. So it looked like we go down this way. I'm sure everything will be fine, guys. There must be a way to get to the rift in the lake. Maybe the locals will lend us a boat. I also noticed that I just need to quickly rearrange my skills. Because... Damn it. Is it because I'm in combat? There we go. That should be fine to move now. There we go. Come on. Come on. There we go. Good morrow, sir. The Great Wardens, thank you for your aid, Inquisitor. What are you doing in Crestwood? A warden named Stroud is wanted for questioning. We heard he passed through here, but the villagers knew nothing. They have troubles enough. What have you been told about this rogue warden? Warden Commander Corell ordered his capture. I can say no more than that. I hope Sir Stroud comes with us peacefully. I trained under him for a time. He's a good man, I'm sure of that. Will you stay to fight the undead here? My orders forbid it. Crestwood was only a detour. If the Inquisition can help, I beg you to do what you can. The villagers have already lost too many. Farewell. Farewell. Sir, are you sure we can't help the village? Our orders are clear. I will do what I can. I believe this is the right way. None of those wardens mentioned a new leader. I don't think they're part of Corypheus' plot to seize the Order. I do not think so either. The infiltration in their ranks may be subtle. I hope Hawk's Warden friend has answers for us. Okay, good. More Ring Velvet. I need that. Ooh, something interesting down here. Always need more Elf Roots. Dead by the gates. Let's lend a hand. 
Dorian, you're feeling so helpful today. For someone named Judith. Oh, was I speaking out loud? Hmm. Judith lives outside the village. I asked her to hide here when the undead came, but she wouldn't hear it. Why wouldn't she hide where it's safer? Likes her space, she says. I told Judith my house was big enough. Me and the boy could sleep in the barn if she wanted room. She turned me down. Good day to you. Leave her alone then. If she says no, even if the if the, it's literally undead arising from the ground and she still says no I don't want to stay at your place I think it's time you took the message mate I'm just saying you seem nice and you seem helpful but if she says no it's not safe to work the fields what does it matter there's no one to sell to Start looking around in case there's anything. Go away. Okay. Just having a quick look around. Do you want to take care of other things? Please! You may have use your assistance. I will see if I can help if I can. Village, at your service, despite everything. Are you here to stop the undead? We will, right? I mean, these people are terrified. The undead are appearing because of a rift in the Fade. How can I get to it? The light in the lake? It's coming from the caves below Old Crestwood. Darkspawn flooded it ten years ago during the Blight. Wiped out the village. Killing the refugees we took in. I saw a dam. If we use it to drain the lake, I can get to that fade rift. Drain it? There must be some other way. We are trying to help. The Inquisitor is the only one who can close the rift. You'd have to evict the bandits of the old fort to use the dam. I can't ask you to risk your life. Crestwood can't last much longer. I don't want to leave without doing what I can. I uh, let me do the right thing, God damn it. This. this key unlocks the gate to the dam control past the fort. The rift must be in the caves under old Crestwood. But Inquisitor, I would not linger there. Until later. Of course. So it sounds like we're gonna be kicking some bandits ass. Hell yeah. I can understand how someone might want to join the Wardens. Oh, thank you. You're the Inquisitor. Um, but yes, the Wardens are heroes. They saved me from those demons, Your Worship. With all that's happening, I'd like to help people the same way. <laughs> By joining the Grey Wardens. You can't think of something less lethal. Then I wish you luck in their service. Thank you. Make you proud. Uh, I imagine that you could have asked them to join the Inquisition, but no. Nah. Oh well. The rain and the greenery reminds me of a place in the land where the women are tall, buff, and famous. Are you there, Glasha? We have a pick my voice from Savaholder. 
Well, I think I can certainly oblige with that. Since you were such a good human and asked so nicely. Memory of the Drowned. On the eighth day of the blooming tide, we fought the fifth flight. Remember the night the dam broke open, drowning the dark spawn in flood water. I have to get in like the right slouching stance for Glosh's voice. We remember the cries of those swept away, our families and good neighbors. We remember refugees who took shelter with us, also lost in the dark. We give their souls to the maker, beloved Andraste, guide them to his side. Uh, a bit too pious and holy for my taste. You are my most inquisitor. I am Sister Born. Does the mayor finally plan to drain the lake? I must find someone to retrieve the remains of those lost there. You wanted to exhume the corpses at the bottom of the lake. They were the maker's children. Their earthly bodies deserve better than abandonment in a mire. A funeral service will help put living minds at ease. Your devotion does you credit, Sister. Seek a pentecast. Forgive me. I did not expect to see the right hand of the divine in our humble village. Be at ease. We have too much to do to stand on rank. Yes, Seeker. As you say. Until later. Farewell. All right, I'll do what I can. I have to say, I very much uh, am intrigued by this place. Rainy, mossy, a lot of good things to fight. <laughs> Let's see where that idiot is lurking. Hmm, seems like that's a slightly better option, so... Let's take a slightly longer way around. Virgil, you're too kind. Um... I hear reconstruction is progressing well in Kirkwood. I know things are bad there. I wasn't trying to. You weren't trying to remind me how bad it is in Kirkwall, so you decided to talk about it? About its recovery. What you're talking about are the buildings, and even that will take years. People don't recover so easily. Can everyone confirm that they are also looking at what I'm looking at? Please. Did this poor individual either get crushed to death by a wheel of cheese? And are those like tarot cards or something else that's surrounding them? In my many years of wandering the wilds with my orc pack, just my... This is one of the, at least in the top three, strangest things I've seen. <laughs> Well, that's some divine intervention if I ever saw it. And that's what happens when you take the road less traveled. You find all kinds of interesting and unexpected things. The wooden facade has been erected at the mouth of this cave, presumably to show any occupants from the weather. Hmm. Suspicious, though. It seems like a good place to hide. The bandits are just across the way, so I can keep an eye on those bastards. I've managed to take back some of the supplies they stole from the, that traveling merchant. They didn't even see it coming. But I'm not afraid. And they want to fight. They can come and get me. 
I like the writer's bravado. I sadly think that they are very dead. <laughs> but I have to say, chat, thank you for the in incredibly kind welcome. It's nice to see that you all got such good taste. Unnatural things walk in the night. It's the maker punishing a sinful world. That's what I say. Good for you. All right, I have all the ring velvet I require, but uh, those venatory tomes are going to be annoying. Why do we keep going? We set up that next camp, and then I think maybe I'll take a little bit of a look to see if I can find those tomes. Then I can start my next part of the journey, and then we can maybe go to the masquerade. How does that sound, chat? I have to say, it's the first time people have asked me for an encore. <laughs> I'm certainly, certainly no bard, but you know what? Since you all asked so nicely, I think that uh, the Seraph of Stories might have another tale or two up his sleeve. And who knows, you might be seeing me again sooner rather than later. Since you made me feel so welcome. And we come to the end of that particular pick my voice. Ahead. Be cautious. They look well armed. So thank you so very much for requesting it, Salva Holder. Wonderful, wonderful choice, I must say. <laughs> mm. Need a little bit of water though. Mm. Oh, Doge. Um uh, Galash's weapon of choice is an axe. Although I could also maybe see her wielding a great sword. No, no, stop that. Okay, maybe along this way. Damn it. Fine. I think we accidentally hit that drop low on accident. 
but god let's that's that's a tough beastie Let's go down, come on. Okay, we should be able to make our camp just up this hill here. Perfect. Good, good. Oh, uh, Salva Holder. With um, Blash's voice, one thing that I learned when I was taking singing lessons um, uh, a short while back is um, how to speak from different areas in uh your all along uh your uh voice box and uh different parts uh it's actually like the way that you can reach very high notes and very low notes so uh with glasha i just try and lower my larynx and it's just something that you can get used to with enough uh practice so that the voice is more coming from um deep in your chest as opposed to when I'm more relaxed and it's a lot higher. Like, my voice is naturally uh, deeper than normal. Or deeper than most, I should say. Half those. Inquisitor, I have something for you. Do you know? What is it? See for yourself, sir. All right, so we've established camp here. Why don't we take a little bit of a journey to try and find... Venatory tomes. Moose Grove, Desert Lake, and Salt Plains. That's a forbidden oasis. I have a feeling I might have to unlock some more areas. Before I can do that. Because I do want to do that so I can spend uh, the points that I get from leveling up on my new abilities. Because they're really cool. Hmm. But yeah, with Glasha, when I was performing her voice, um, I found I was taking a very a much more relaxed dance like you probably can't see it too well on webcam but essentially like I would lower the mic and so I'd be very heavily slouching uh, in my chair essentially when you imagine like um like the big tough badass like sitting a across the tavern and they have that natural like slouch to them like they're at ease but they're aware of everything around them to entice you to move towards them to speak Worship. to them at ease. Let's unlock some new areas since we have the power to do so. I 
think it's this way. That looks promising. Stop Venatory activity in the West. The Liana spies have discovered Anyone? orders from the Venatory's high-ranking commanders. A large number of mages are traveling westward to excavate something of great value to our cause. The Inquisition must find whatever its enemies are searching for. The region is vast, but Liliana is ready to put her network to use in tracking down Corycus's minions. The Venatory is sending some of their best scholars into the wilderness. Let us discover precisely where they are heading. The Venatori are camped in a place known as the Hissing Waste. They're working their slaves to death, digging old buildings out of the sand. The Inquisition should step in quickly, because if it doesn't, I'm going to bash the Venatori's head in. And you'll need a new scout. From lead scout, Harding. We love you, Harding. I'll grab Dorian again for this, because... Venatori. Also, I haven't taken Cole out on any missions yet. And let's grab Iron Ball. Mm -mm. We mustn't read from the book. <laughs> We're off to find the find the book of Amun Ra. And I will read from it. Any luck charting the area? I did what I could, Your Worship. This space has nothing but space. If there's nothing valuable here, I say let Corypheus have it. Okay, yes, I'm sorry, I have to say it. Nothing valuable, you're here. The desert is immeasurably more precious with you in it, Scout Harding. <laughs> when did you come up with that one? I had some time along the way. I did find something for you. Old dwarven ruins on the surface. Impossible, but there you go. The Red Templars are digging them out with Venatori supervision. Whatever they want, we must beat them to it. I just saw Red Templars heading northwest to here. They might be a good start. I found this map on a dead one. Maybe it shows where they're headed. Good luck. I will just say, I'm really proud of how I actually kind of use those tricky sliders to design my Inquisitor. Because when you see her in cutscenes, cut she looks like she fits in the rest of the world. Like, I didn't make her too original one. character do not steal, for lack of a better term. What is it? You may want to look into this. Okay. Okay, let's start with heading that direction. Cole, I'm pretty sure I've given you... Are you strong enough for that yet? Give you something slightly better. Do we have better armor for you? Hmm, not quite there yet. That's okay, sweetie. We'll get some nice stuff for you soon. It's a crime that you can't romance Scar Harding. I absolutely agree. Like, she's so sweet. We, we just love seeing her at every new location. Like, I will say, desert levels and desert areas I am really not a fan of, but I'm not gonna lie, this is really fucking gorgeous. Because it's usually deserts during the day, it's just sand, and it's coarse and annoying, and it gets everywhere. But I will say this kind of thing, where it's like a desert at night, and it's more like a mix between uh, like scrubland and vast desert, that's cool. Of course I had to go there. Of course I had to go there, guys. Like, what? It's me. What did you expect? Now, I'm not sure if this area was named as one of the places that we can get the tomes from the Venatori. It's very big. So I gathered. The Red Templars like the cold. It makes the Red less angry. Oh. 
Oh, they might be a bit too strong for us, so let's take the slightly longer way around. Come on, guys. I'm keeping an eye out more for, like, Venatori rather than the Red Templars, because they seem very strong. Okay, let's see how this goes with this rift. Hopefully it won't be too difficult. Oh, fuck. Oh, fuck. There. Oh, they're strong. Oh, that's a pride demon. They just uh, one hit coal and iron wool. Okay, uh, this area is very strong. Um, fuck. Uh, Dorian? Dorian, you might want to back up, buddy. Dorian? I, I need to resuscitate the other guys just to keep it distracted. Okay, uh, we might be just a little bit fucked. Okay, guys, uh, we're going to uh, change the plan by running. Guys, we're, we're, we're going to try this fun thing called running. Okay, good. Okay, good plan. Good plan. I was hoping that wouldn't be that difficult, but okay. Maybe when we get just a little, just a little bit stronger, then we'll stand a fighting chance. But at the moment, I'm level eleven. Some of these guys are still level ten. I should probably uh, now. I'm realizing I should probably uh, level up coal because I'm a fucking moron. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry, Cole. You deserve better. That's a rift, and I'm not going to go anywhere fucking near it. Should be Venatory kind of in this area, maybe. Maybe. Hmm. There is a sizable Venatory presence in the hissing waste. It is odd place for them. Okay. That camp over there looks promising, but let me just make camp quickly, and then we'll see if we can find some. You guys good back there? Ah, they're fine. This book appears to be a diary with strange charts and illustrations drawn beside thin, cramped columns of text. At first I thought the rocks uh, that glow fell from the sky, but the spirits whisper that these shards have been here for ages, as you reckon them. Did the tear in the veil uh, reveal these stones? Is that what the strangely dressed mages want? 
why the strangely dressed mages want them. Yesterday they were erecting skulls of all things on top of pillars. The spirits warned me to hide, and it was a good thing I listened. I saw one of the mages cut a man open with a dagger and milk the power of his blood, and I am afraid of a man who could do that to another as if it's nothing. I thought Templars were supposed to stop blood mages, but the ones that came here are strange and red and are working with the mages. The spirits agree, it's very alarming. They've been urging me to run further into the wastes, but my supplies are low. I'll go in a few days if hunting goes well. Oh, I'm sorry, mate. Venatory camp, maybe? They're strong, though. They're not... They're not as bad, though, so hopefully... Oh, fuck. Uh, no. Cut that shit out. Please. Okay, um, so we're going to ignore that. Fuck. Okay, um, I might set up that camp. And then we might attack the Venatori. Because, oh boy, these are... Those guys were very, very strong. And just a little bit scary. So we might have to um, do the Masquerade quest first. Just saying. Oops. Oh shit. Not a bad spot to camp. Right in the middle of a Venatory camp. Can they now help us fight the Venatory? I'm going to exploit this weakness. And just fast travel away. It's called a tactical retreat. There we go. Everything's fine. Alrighty. So. Shall we do the masquerade quest? And then, by then, we should have gained a bit more experience. And then we can get those Venatory tomes. Oops. Oh, god damn it. I spent power to unlock new areas, and now we can't do the quest. Fuck. I'm sorry, guys. Looking good. Not good enough. <sighs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm drinking some more Smokehead, uh, which is good because I am currently, I have no brains. And I am very frustrated at that. I'm sorry, guys. I thought we had enough power for that. That's okay. That's okay. Let's go back to Crestwood. Time to grind, baby. And mages. Now oh, let's grab some of this. Mm -mm. Yeah, I just need to level up. Not just a bit, a lot. 
um, and maybe get uh, some better armor for my lovely comrades. But let's take care of that rift first before we get too much further. There we go, that's a bit more manageable. There we go. We needed a win. Okay, and yeah, it shouldn't take too long for me to get back the power that we needed uh, in order to do the next major quest. plants versus corpses. In the strange struggles that have raged across Ferelden, one of the most peculiar is the Battle of Pauper's Cap. A powerful demon, bent on gaining power in the mortal world, raised an army of corpses to assault the home of uh, Helenthus, a reclusive apostate who is said to possess both, both fabulous wealth and great knowledge. While the demon saw the perfect host in this bejeweled bookworm, Helenthus uh, was, not one, was not without defenses of her own. As the corpses shuffled towards her house, Alanthius called to the demon, declaring that though she was just a simple apostate, the demon would see her power and entire uh, see her power and entire infantry. Then, calling upon her magic, she summoned spirits into the plants in her vegetable patch, creating countless tiny sylvans. The resulting garden warfare saw corpses armored with buckets and doors as makeshift helmets and shields battling possessed fruits and vegetables, who spat seeds, constructed makeshift fortifications, and even chomped entire corpses whole. In the end, the area around Telanthus' home became both garden and graveyard, home to the corpses and destroyed, uh, corpses destroyed as she defended herself and the, this world from the demon. Had she been defeated and her great brain turned to the demon's purposes, we might well have seen such terrible corpses rampaging from the great pyramids of Parvolan to the fire-infested waters of uh, Lomeran, or even into the unknown western lands. Is this my lunch? I thought we were dining on bacon today. I was informed there would be bacon. No, I shall not take the point. <laughs> Why? Because I am mad. An unsourced and debatable tale from Davith the Mad, supposedly shared at his estate in Walnut Hills where he spent his later years. Well. There's a, a reference that maybe some only some people will get. Do you remember a fun little game called Plants vs. Zombies? Come on, Lavallon. Get your ass out of there. You guys got this. Soulless, you can take care of these, surely. It's just some wolves.
And I just realized, guys, look, if you've played Plants vs. Zombies, um, that layout with all the sunflowers, and look at these rows with all these corpses just lying there. God damn it. I feel old. Yes, let's go back and meet this lovely individual. This is the best way. I could be wrong, though, of course. There's probably a lot easier way to get there. Ooh. Although it pays to be adventurous. Okay, maybe there's a slightly better route to get there. Let's go a slightly long way around by hugging this hillside. I was curious and I had to look it up. Plants vs. Zombies first came out in 2009. Guys, I can use some backup. No, don't. Don't, 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 don't. Guys. God, you guys suck. I will not get flattened by a fucking drop low and that being the end of me. I love this game, but my god, it's glitchy sometimes. Now you decide to fight. Fuck you. You know what? I'm going to leave this for you guys to handle. I got shit to do. Hmm. 
Orcs, Grey, Ward, and Ally should be inside that cave. There we go. Hey, Hawk. Glad you made it. I just got here myself. My contact with the Wardens should be at the back of the cave. A group of Wardens were protecting a villager from corpses out near Crestwood. They were likely hunting my friend. I'm glad they didn't come looking for people to help in here. They might well be good men, but they've been given bad orders. Let's go. Grab useful things along the way. Well, that's not ominous. This banner marks the cave as an outpost of the blind men, notorious smugglers who are known to sell slaves to the winter. It is possible that the Grey Wardens asked them politely to leave so that he could use their hideout, although the bloodstains on the wall suggest otherwise. I love I just stride in like I own the place. I'm the Inquisitor, goddammit. Hi. It's just us. I brought the Inquisitor. My name is Toud, and I'm at your service, Inquisitor. I'll take all the help I can get. I know the Wardens have troubles of their own. I wonder, though, might those troubles have anything to do with Corypheus? Mm, I fear it is so. When my friend Hawk slew Corypheus, Weishaupt was happy to put the matter to rest. But an archdemon can survive wounds that seem fatal, and I feared Corypheus might possess the same power. My investigation uncovered clues, but no proof. Then, not long after, every warden in Orlais began to hear the calling. Maker! Why didn't you tell me? It was a Grey Warden matter. I was bound by an oath of secrecy. Is the calling some sort of Grey Warden ritual? The calling tells a Warden that the Blight will soon claim him. Starts with dreams. Then come whispers in his head. The Warden says his farewells and goes to the Deep Roads to meet his death in combat. And every Grey Warden in Orlais is hearing that right now. They think they're dying. Yes. Likely because of Corypheus. If the Wardens fall, who will stand against the next Blight? It is our greatest fear. So Corypheus isn't controlling them. He's bluffing them with this calling. And they're falling for it. So the Wardens think they're dying and have stopped thinking clearly. That won't go well. We are the only ones who can slay Archdemons. Without us, the next blight will consume the world. Warden Commander Clarell spoke of a blood magic ritual to prevent future blights before we all perished. When I protested the plan as madness, my own comrades turned on me. Grey Wardens are gathering here, in the western approach. It is an ancient Tevinta ritual tower. Meet me there. We will find answers. Sounds like a plan. Let's go. Because the western approach and to winter, that means that I might be able to find some some tomes over there. Regarding the calling, so many refuse to speak of it. But how can we know it? How can we identify it if we do not share it? The calling is not a source of shame. The song that whispers in the back of my mind is no evil upon my soul, but the mark of a life well lived in service of a greater good. If all things come from the, from the Maker, then is this too not part of his plan? Could it not be a gift, a final haunting melody to send us into the afterlife with hearts opened? Could this not be his song? It scratches at my thoughts, the music almost a voice, at once unearthly and beautiful. 
I found myself humming it aloud a few days past. Where once it intruded, it now feels a natural part of my mind's course. It coils around memories I hold dear, training with Sir Keller, riding in the moonlight, my mother's face the last time I saw her, and inserts itself into them, so that I could almost swear that music, that sense of a presence watching and calling, had always been a part of what I remember. This is what the senior wardens warned us of, I imagine. I should not find it beautiful. I must remember the corruption and recognize that my mind is slowly losing uh, slowly losing the wit to differentiate between this world and that which I would consume and that which would consume and destroy it. I must, I can. I will tell the wardens tomorrow. I have seen their looks. They already know, I suspect. I will heed the calling and go to the deep roads to die with the dwarves, fighting as a grey warden should. But if I am to die, after all I have given, can I not at least allow myself the pleasure of the song's beauty? Okay, let's grab some more deep mushrooms, and then I think we'll just run around this area a bit longer. Must have a bit more strength. Okay. If we just run around Crestwood a bit... I think if we do that quest, we should then get a good amount of power out of it if we just do other stuff along the way. Which is... Okay, let's just quickly fast travel to the camp, get a bit of a... Skip to save some time. Ooh, you got okay. something for me? Nice. Uh, I saw what those bandits did at Randall's farm. Enough's enough. Even if I can't stay here, I'm not letting the sodding highwaymen take my home from me. If any of you slugs can read, I set the fire with heaps of dry cow dung. Hope you like shifting through the ashes. Oh. Hopefully, if we drain this lake, then things can start to go somewhat back to normal. I close the rift, of course.
Uh, is that the key? That looks like it's the key. Alright, time to charge in straight through the front door. Guys, what are you attacking now? There's the keep the mayor talked about. And the bandits. The walls look sturdy. Taking it wouldn't be easy. Not that sturdy. I never like hurting the Mavari or the, the wolves in this game. Thank you, Solus. Oh, God damn it. I need to get better armor, I swear to God. That's more like it. Do you ever miss life beneath the earth? The call of the stone? Nah, whatever the stone, capital S, is, it was gone by the time my parents had me. But do you miss it? How could I miss what I never had? But say I did have that sense, that connection to the stone. What would it cost me? Would I lose my friends up here? Would I stop telling stories? I like who I am. If I want to hear songs, I'll go to the tavern. You are wiser than most. I love you, Barrack. I love you so much. Mr. Creepy Pasta and Ch Chat, Raid, thank you so much, guys. How's it going? I hope you're all doing well this evening, having a ton of fun with MCP. And thank you so much for joining us tonight. We are just enjoying some Dragon Age Inquisition, so feel free to stay as long as you like. 
Thanks so much for the rates, <laughs> Mr. Creepy Foster. I really appreciate it. Yes, everyone in chat, grab some more seats for everyone. I was saving that for when we got to the final boss. Appreciate it. Hey Steph, my happy late birthday. Thank you so much. And thank you so much for the 18 month resub. I really, really appreciate it. You're amazing, thank you. Come on, come on. Almost. Makes me feel like I should go back to the Fallow Mire and take another shot at the Avar Chieftain. Because those soldiers that they've got prisoned over there, they're probably not doing so great. This place would be an asset to our agents if you claimed it. Oh, hell yes. Ooh, that mall looks like a wonderful gift for Iron Ball, maybe. And I clean this keep. In the name of the Inquisition. Does that give us enough power that I can do the other quest? Maybe? Please? Hell yeah. What now? We should drink the lake. The mayor said the dam controls were through the fort. Welcome, Inquisitor. My name is Charter. Eleana dies near here, especially in this place. I'll have some information for you once my man Butcher finds us. He's running late. When's the spy named Butcher supposed to arrive? Half hour ago, by the south gate. I hope he's only delayed. Butcher's last message swore he had secrets for us worth ten times his weight in gold. Did Sister Nightingale tell you why she wanted agents here? We lie on the main road between Denerim and Valroyo. Couriers stop here all the time. For what they're paid, some have surprisingly loose tongues. What's happening in Crestwood? The roads are nearly deserted. Too many undead keep rising from the lake. I should be going. Another time. All right, let's drain this lake then. Uh, and I will just grab some more of those regeneration potions. Okay, how am I doing for uh, Inquisition power? Okay, almost there. Only need like nine more uh, points of power and then we should be good. Uh, I might change things up with the party though. Like Cassandra you've been amazing. But I want to change things around a bit. Uh, since we've gotten things all squared up with Hawk. And let's just make sure that everyone, except for me, because I want to.
save my ability points for when I can get some very nice stuff later, but oops. Uh, Iron Ball, I think I have something new for you. Okay. It doesn't do as much DPS, but it's still very, very good. Let's try giving that a shot, because it looks so badass too. Uh, do I have anything better than Dorian? No, I just gave you that, so I think you're fine for now. Don't have anything else. That's okay. Oh, is there something I can turn in here? Actually, I could probably the sell some stuff. To my shop. Let me know if there's anything you need, my lady. Uh, I could probably sell some stuff. I thought all the merchants in the area left when the undead came. You've come to vanquish them, have you not? I'm only too happy to offer you my best rings to speed your noble efforts onwards. Some of your wares are a little expensive for a farming village. Many lords and ladies pass through here on their way to proper cities. You'd be surprised what they sometimes forget. Wig powder, mirrors, plate armor. Sadly, less refined goods take up the bulk of my trade. Good day to you. Farewell. Okay, uh, I just need to probably sell off some valuables to make some more space. Some of the stuff does look pretty nice though. Ooh. Silk dart. Oh, that'd be so nice for coal. How much is that? Oh yeah, we can afford that. Coal. As a welcome to the Inquisition present, I have something for you. A far better knife. There we go. Yes. Yes. Okay, uh, and before I proceed further, I will save. Because I keep forgetting to do that. And thank you for the stretch check, Hayden. Oh. Thank you, thank you. And yes, Varric is absolutely a good boy as well. Here, the mayor said the down controls were through this gate. Yes, down here, looks like. I like to imagine that uh, if you get something special for Cole, or you find a new weapon that you can give to him, uh, he just holds it so delicately in his hands, and he's just very quiet for a long period of time. That like, on the dam must be where we can open the floodgates. Yes, yes, yes. And uh, he's just holding this blade in his uh, open hands, looking at it, and he just slowly then looks up at you. I will kill many people with this blade to save many more. And you just kind of nod. Pat him on the back, go. You do that, okay. Just don't kill anyone unless they're really, really bad. Like, he's got the spirit. He's just a little confused sometimes. The rusted horn. That sounds. Oh, sorry. Oh. Don't Ooh. mind us. Just passing by. <laughs> the Inquisitor. We didn't know you were here, sir. Please don't tell anyone. Mm, no, I won't. My lips are sealed. Oh, thank you. Lonnie's mum and dad would have had my head. <sighs> I'll have to wait hours to go back. My father will still be up. I knew this was a mistake. We could try the caves. You hate spiders. You find somewhere next time. As you were. Okay, I'm just going to do a quick check around to see if there's anything useful in this tavern. But, I, I'm sorry, I did not in mean to interrupt anything. Um, ignore us. 
The First Blight, Chapter 1. Thedas is a land of fierce diversity, from the assassin princes of Antiva to the faded griffins of the Antifals. But in my travels I have found one tale that unites the people of this land. It is a story of pride and damnation, and although the telling differs, the essence of the tale remains the same. At the height of its power, the Tevinter Imperium stretched over much of Thedas, uniting the known world under the rule of the tyrannical Magisters. It is said that the old gods whom the Magisters worshipped gave them the knowledge of blood magic, and the Magisters used this forbidden power to cement their rule. The blood of elven slaves and humans alike ran down imperial altars to fuel Magister greed. The tales of their excesses so horrifying that one can only be grateful that blood magic is prohibited today. But all that stands taught must eventually fall. Perhaps they foresaw their ruin, or perhaps their pride knew no bounds. But whatever the reason, the Magisters dared to open a magical portal into the Golden City at the heart of the Fade. They sought to usurp the Maker's throne, long left unattended in the Golden City after the Maker turned his back on his creations. They would storm heaven itself with their power and become as gods. This is what the Chantry, in its off-exercise tendency to understate, refers to as the Second Sin. According to most versions of, versions of the tale, the Magisters did indeed reach the Golden City and walked into the home of the Maker, where no living being before them had dared, or been able, to tread. But humanity is not meant to walk in heaven. The Magisters were wicked with pride and other sins, and their presence tainted the Golden City. What once was a perfect holy citadel became a twisted home of darkness and nightmares. The Magisters were expelled back through their gateway and cursed for their treachery. As the Golden City had been tainted, so were the Magisters twisted and transformed into things of darkness, the very first of the Darkspawn. The Golden City, once a shining beacon at the heart of the Fade, became the Black City, a reminder of all that man's uh, pride has cost. From Tales of Destruction of Thetis by a brother Genevin T. Chantry Scholar. Okay, the Rusted Horn's menu. Welcome to the Rusted Horn. Three exclamation points. Ale, three coppers. Cold ale is ten coppers. Wine, two silver. Brandy, and even brandy, six silver. Bread and cheese, two coppers. Turnip and mutton pie, three coppers. Fish, uh, three. Stew, four. Plate of wyvern wings, really chicken, five coppers. Wyvern steak reel is two gold. Interesting menu. Yeah, it's great. I love the women wings and uh, just... Oh, I, I could only imagine like how a lot of this would taste. Like the ale would probably be really watered down as well. There we go. There we go. Was this place run by the master of the house? That sounds like it was. I know what you're referring to with that. <laughs> God, I need to see Lamez again sometime. Mm. With and steak, I'll happily have a croc burger. I haven't had a uh, crocodile since I went to uh, New Orleans. And oh my god, is it good. So good. Uh, maybe not stand right on the edge, Inquisitor. I will say that does look pretty cool. With like these massive chains going into the lake. But I think if we go along this way, we'll be able to get our way down. I like how Iron Ball just Today's stood there. Day. Wait, what? Today is a very good day. God, I love you, Iron Ball. Ah, hi. It is. That is a very pretty dragon. I like to imagine that, like, as as you said, like, Einvall's just standing there while, like, my tiny 
elfy inquisitor is just like pushing this massive thing like sweating bullets uh, it's because he's distracted by the antive and brandy and the other uh liquor that was found in that cellar and he's just like you got this boss I could use some help, you know, Bull. Nah, you got this. You need to toughen up. Like, I'm with you in spirit. Also, hi, uh, Avalanche. I think it's your first time with us, and I hope you're having a good time. Shall we? Avalanche. I really hope you've had a good week and you have an awesome weekend planned. Hell yeah. Like, look at us, we're already halfway to level 12. Hey, okay, good, good. Is it also useful? There's an Australian food truck that shows up here every summer and they sell crocodile, kangaroo, and camel burgers. Oh, I haven't had kangaroo in a really long time. It's good. Let's take a look. Grey whiskey slash right wine slash conscription ale, a bottle marked vintage, warden daedalum, extra red. Nice, another bottle for us. Oh, that looks promising down there. Currently doing my first playthrough of Inquisition and doing a an, uh, Dalish Elf Mage as well. Like, playing Elves is so much fun in this game. You get to find out so much of the lore and other interesting things. And also, Mages are great in this game. I could never really get comfortable playing a Warrior though. That's why I usually prefer to either play Rogue or Mage. Undead seem endless. Spirits can't resist them. They reach out to see what our reality is like and get tripped. These spirits must have come through the rift. Let's close it before more of them decide to try on corpses. One's looking. I'm cold. Don't be afraid. Oh. Cole, you are too pure for this world. Okay, great whiskey. Uh, oh, some more of the conscription ale. A bottle marked vintage Warden Gibbons. Don't freaking touch him. <laughs> I spit in this, I mean it. You're a spirit. Demon. Thing. Yes. And you're the Iron Bull. Afraid of demons. Mm. Not fond of them, no. But you and I are fine as long as you don't do any weird crap. Lying awake. Sheets soaked in sweat, afraid to call the Tamasrans. Shadows make shapes in the dark. 
If it gets in my head, how do I cut it out? Itching, shaking, tears slide cold down my cheeks. Tama, I'm scared. Yeah, weird crap like that. <laughs> Pretty much what I meant. He's just trying to help. He just has a habit of getting into your head without asking first. Dyer has been kept uh, miraculously dry in a sealed chest, but its pages are filled with powdery black mold. Grace has a uh, cough. All well and good, but help those running from the blight. Uh, all well and good to help those running from the blight, but if my daughter catches something from these refugees, I'll have the mares hide. At least they uh, move them into the caves. I thought they put up a fuss, but they went quiet and pale as the dead. The healthy ones were relieved, said their sick friends seemed to get worse in the daylight. Make us save us from the plague. Lock of the door uh, of this house of Reese. Mayor Daedric. Something interesting here. The other way. Hello. You, you there. I ought to be able to tell me why nothing here heeds my commands. Uh, huh? It's a spirit. What's it doing? Silence. Let the other one talk. Maybe you can give it some guidance, Cole. Maybe. My name is... Ah, Compassion. Did I ask your name? I'm sorry. Oh! What's so distressing about the real you? It ignores me. I ordered the bolts to part, but they do not. I made this guy from close, and it stays still. I don't know how you all can stand it. Why haven't you gone back to the Fade? I will not be denied. I refuse to leave until something obeys my orders. Then I feel compelled to help you. I pledge myself to your service. Excellent. I have only one command. A creature made of rage had the gall to chase me across the lake. Destroy it in my name and be rewarded. Rewarded how? By you taking over one of our heads? Yours holds no interest. I think we already took care of it. Yes. Okay, maybe not. I should leave. Oh. I'll keep an eye out for it though. Okay. So the entrance to these caves are probably somewhere along where the cliffs are. There's a plant. This was the mayor's old home. The work you ordered is done. Do what you want. I'll be in the hills trying to forget it. A letter from Crestwood's mayor. Damp but legible. Something shifty. I don't like this. Oh, this looks promising. Where does this lead? There we go. Oh, Samuel, do you have, do you, do you really have waffles? Oh, I could really go for some wa some waffles right now. With like vanilla ice cream and like a berry compote. Just, oh, that'd be really good. Come on, let's find that fade rift. It's humming below us. The window, wanting, wandering, looking back at what's looking. Our resident expert seems to think we're on the right path. Thank you so much for the gift of community sub. 
You're absolutely amazing. Thank you. I really, really appreciate it. Yeah, I'm usually more of a pancakes person myself, maybe because I make pancakes for myself uh, more often. But if like I'm going to a nice breakfast at a hotel or something, then I like to get waffles. Just because I don't make them for myself that often. Or ever. <laughs> Okay, let's have a little bit of a look around here first. Uh, fluffy Mexican or flat European pancakes. Um, I prefer my pancakes uh, to be slightly flatter. Uh, so then you can put more like topping and stuff on top of them. Uh, I'm not a big fan of like the super thick pancakes just because then it just unless it's something like blueberry pancakes and then it has a bit more of a filling to them. Um, uh, for me they just like it's it's too much of the batter and there's not enough uh, surface area to put like nice toppings on them. But that's just for me. save quickly just in case because things came a little bit close uh, when we were taking the key alright we have another pick my voice from Furju can you do the mob girl voice from the Drider series I do find myself invested in that store of yours um well I I could certainly try if, if, if you request it, since you requested it so nicely. Hi everyone. It's so nice to be back. I like I like these caves. They remind me of Caver's Caves. They're not as pretty though. Much more spooky than pretty. And I don't think the people down here are very friendly either. There we go. Oh, what do I think of waffles? Um, well, I, I can't really eat human food so much. Um, I, I do like the, the syrup that they put on the pancakes and waffles. I think that's right. It's like a, a, a gooey kind of almost like tree sap but it, it's really sweet and tasty oh I I like hugs I, I enjoy hugs from time to time just so, so long as like you don't squeeze too hard and are careful with my wings then then I, I really like hugs Oh, 
This doesn't sound good at all. Oh, thank you for the hydrate check. It is really, really pretty down here. A little, a little spooky with all the sad, angry, dead people, but still really pretty. Uh, oh, um, wh wh what do I think of the Iron Bull? Well, um, he he's very tall, and he has really broad shoulders, and carries a very that, that that big weapon very well and it, it looks like he gives really good hugs <clears throat> oh look a piece of lore i can read this roadway was created by royal order of king kalgak to link the great thag of adakon adakon with the soaring thag of gundar it pleases these cities to join these roads with a hall in the middle and to dedicate that hall to Paragon Hecat, who discovered principles of nature that let us find structures of unheard of height and astounding breadth, that is renowned be as eternal as the stone as he is as the stone he shaped. Inscription on a plaque found on an abandoned dwarven road near beneath Crestwood. Paragons known and lesser known. This, the criteria the dwarves use to name a paragon never ceases to fascinate me. While a relatively rare distinction, it seems almost any achievement of significance warrants the title. Some paragons are the victors of great battles, others write books or songs. The only common thread is an act that better or sustains the dwarven way of life in some notable fashion. Aitken was among the oldest and perhaps most famous paragons, not to be confused with his descendant, King Endrin Aitken. This Prior Aidekun was a humble member of the warrior caste, his brave leadership during the first blight save Ozuma. When others when other thakes were lost, Aidekun claimed defeat, but his service made him a hero. History now remembers Aidekun as the quintessential paragon. Other paragons have been more controversial. Caradin, a master smith, created the powerful golems who helped the dwarves immeasurably in their battles with the Darkspawn. K uh, Caradin then disappeared amidst much, much speculation, taking the secret of his craft with him. There is also Astith the Grey, a paragon of the warrior caste. She was famous for her skills in unarmed combat and cut out her own tongue to focus on the art of distract without distraction. An order of female dwarven warriors known as the Silent Sisters persists. They remove their tongues in her honor. Ow. These are the most well-known of the dwarven paragons. Others have earned the rank over the ages with uh, far less noble pursuits. I found references to paragons who made their names writing particularly good rhymes or brewing stronger ales. Then there's a paragon named Varon, who separated from his legion and lost his way in the deep roads. Varon nearly starved to death before breaking down and eating a nug, believing at the time as appetizing to dwarves as a rat. Devouring this, the creature not only saved his life but opened his palate to a new world of flavor. When they finally found him, Varon was fatter than he had, uh, than ever and raving a about the miraculous subtleties of nug flesh. The creatures are now considered a dwarven delicacy. From Stone Halls of the Dwarves by Brother Genevinti, Chantry Scholar. Oh, so well, I also 100% certain the Iron Bull um, carries rope with him at all times. Well, that that's interesting. Hmm. That's interesting. I'm sure he, he and Cable would have a lot to talk about, but a lot of people don't like striders. And I worry that these people seem very aggressive.
so we did defeat the spirit that the uh, spirit wanted us to do. Should be able to close the rift soon. Oh, but we do come to the end of that particular pick my voice, so thank you so much, Pierre for requesting me. It's always lovely to come back. <laughs> but thank you so much for that pick my voice. Silka, I agree, is too precious for this world. She is... She's baby. I love her. Like, uh, in answer to your question, uh, Samuel, I imagine uh, for a lot of moth mothfolk, not just Silka, they probably really enjoy uh, a lot of songs that they hear uh, humans playing in taverns because, like, they're drawn to the warmth of um, uh, the taverns and, like, the smells from uh, inside. Oh, are we in some kind of treasure room? That's cool. And so then uh, they really like listening to like uh, tavern songs, whether it's more like upbeat stuff or maybe a bit more solemn and moody. Where are we going? I feel a draft. There must be a way out nearby. Okay, maybe this is an area that's more like once you've done like the ceiling of the rift, then you come through here. Ooh, that looks promising. So let's close that rift first before I get too distracted. Yep, that's the that's the rift. More coming. Cool. Damn, I should have saved that for last. God damn it. That's on me. Damn it. Almost there, come on. Come on, come on, come on. There we go. We did good, guys. I only got knocked down once. No more demons in the dead. The people will be safe now. Let's tell the mayor. They were hurt. We hit them. Their lives are better because of us. Cole, you were too precious. I love you. <laughs> Yay, Cole of 
papers. Oh, iron ball. That looks like something you can help with. Maybe. Seems there is loot down here. Um, I'm more than likely going to go back to Skyhold tonight. Um, I feel bad though because I was like, oh, we'll do like the Olay Masquerade mission this evening, but I, I fudged things up with uh, spending too much of the Inquisition power on unlocking new areas. I'm sorry. Like, I feel like I want to at least start that, but at the same time, like, I want to save that for, like, the start of another stream. And I know I said we'd do that tonight, but I, I just got distracted. I'm sorry. And I know, I know you guys have fun regardless, but I just feel bad if I'm like, hey, we're going to do this mission tonight, and then I get distracted or other things pop up, and I'm like, god damn it. Gotta do all this other shit first. Just check if there's anything useful down here. Let's get out of here. No, I don't think that was a cave crab. I think it was um some poor little nugs that got uh, caught down here. Nugs are the little almost rabbit-like creatures that you find in Thetis. They are very cute, albeit they are hairless, so they're a little weird. <laughs> Anyway, in honor of Stephanie's 31st birthday, allow me to present this. Hayden, what are you doing? What are you doing? Hayden, are you fucking serious? Um, H Park one one three eight with thirty one gifted community subs. <laughs> Holy shit! <laughs> um, I believe that's in uh, honor of my. That is in honor of my thirty first birthday, which was on Monday. Um, thank you so so much, Aiden. <laughs> You're absolutely incredible. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I really, really appreciate it. You're amazing. Oh my god. Holy shit, dude. <laughs> Thank you so much. But Hayden, seriously, I really, really appreciate it. Thank you so, so much. Like, not only renewing your own subscri subscription this evening, but gifted uh, 31 gifted subs. Holy shit. Thank you. I told you I had something planned. It was either this or 331,000 uh, 30, uh, bits. Honestly, either one of those would have been absolutely incredible. Thank you so much. And Mario uh, Devafel, thank you so much for the follow. You are now one of my lovely lost tales, and you're welcome at the Blue Rose Respite anytime. Thank you so much for joining us.
Seriously, you are absolutely amazing, Hayden. Thank you. In any case, that's me done until next month's payday. Honestly, like, Hayden, please don't feel pressured to support me on Twitch. Like, you just go above and beyond each and every time. So thank you so, so much. Wait, what do you mean 31st? It's clear Steph isn't even 26 years old yet. You are too kind. You are too, too kind. <laughs> I'm not pressured, I enjoy it. It's always, it's awesome to not only see a fellow Aussie, but a fellow Perthorian succeeding in their dreams and to be a small part of that journey. Thank you, Hayden. Like, not gonna lie, I'm, uh, I also get like a massive kick whenever I find out that an actor or an entertainer that I like is also Australian and especially if they're from Western Australia. Like, so I, un I understand that feeling and the fact that you just go above and beyond to support me is hugely appreciated and is absolutely amazing. Thank you. Where is that spirit actually? Oh wait, we could take care of that in a second. I should probably go and speak to the mayor. Oh, everything looks so nice now that the clouds are finally cleared. And the streets aren't completely filled with undead anymore. What do you mean the mayor's gone? He ran? What the hell? Uh, okay, this is a thing about the Andafels. The Andafels are a land of shocking extremes. It is the most desolate place in all the world, for two blights have left great expanses of the steppes so completely devoid of life that corpses cannot even decay there. No insect or grub will even reach them. It is a land filled with wonders like, uh, uh, Merdain, where it's with this gigantic white statue of Our Lady carved into its face, her hands outstretched and bearing an eternal flame or a wise up fortress with its walls of living rock towering over the desolate plains below. The Anders too are a people of extremes, the most devout priests and the most deadly so soldiers, the poorest nation in the world and the most feared. Did the mayor run off to the Anders? Letter of Confession, Inquisitor. It was not Darksworn that opened the dam and flooded Old Crestwood ten years ago. I did, in secret, the night they attacked. The undead you have been fighting are people like killed with my own hands. We taken in refugees from the Blight. Many were ill. We moved the sick to the lower part of Crestwood and the refugees into the caves to stop the disease from spreading. It didn't work. One confessed he'd seen Blight sickness before. It was always fatal. 
When the Darkspawn attacked, I knew the only way the village would survive is if the Blightsick drowned with the monsters. I cannot bear the sight, old Crestwood. I cannot bear the sight, old Crestwood, now that the waters are gone. I cannot stay. I'm sorry. Mayor Gregory Dedrick. A of confession from the mayor. It says he was the one who flooded old Crestwood ten years ago to stop the blight from spreading. Villagers learn about this, they're not going to be happy. What a sad mess. Will the Inquisition bring him in? Abso-fucking-lutely. Piece of shit. Okay, but hey, I've got all of the power back. I have all the power back we need to do that particular quest. Uh, I'm actually just going to sell some unneeded stuff. You won't forget the Inquisition help from no one else would, I promise. Okay, just to check. Actually, is that better for you, Iron Bull? Absolutely. Oh no, it's a hand axe. Sorry, that's probably better than for um, Black Wall. Cole, you're good. You're perfect and can do no wrong. Uh, not quite strong enough for that yet. Oh, but that is some much better armor for you. So I'm going to give you that. Um, better armor for me. Dorian, you're good. Uh, anything for coal? Good. Good. There we go. There's some inventory space. But let us head back to Skyhold. Oh, uh, whenever it comes to like random calls, I have, uh, I just turn on, I've turned on that thing on my phone where, um, it automatically, uh, sends any unknown or unexpected numbers. It goes straight to voicemail. Um, just cause I have no patience for cold callers and it's, was becoming a bit of a problem oh, over here in the UK. Just, I have no time for that. No patience for that. By the way, if Baldur's Gate uh, gets fully released, will you give it a try? Abso-fucking-lutely. I've been playing the Early Access and I love it so much. So you can bet that I will absolutely be playing it. Um, and becoming maybe a little bit too obsessed with it. But. Let's just see what we can get. Uh, history knowledge, uh, more inventory capacity, more potions. Cresswood has had no further trouble with the undead. After what happened, it will take time for the village to recover. Harsh environment training can be dangerous, but will harden anyone uh, into a survivor. All party members gain a plus ten percent increase to all defenses. That's very good, actually. And considering we've gotten the shit kicked out of us more than one occasion, that's actually probably not a bad idea. Uh, a number of researchers. With access to a forward training camp, the Inquisition scouts can receive training for cover a wider area and identify items of interest to the Inquisitor. Mm. Connections. Nobility knowledge isn't quite fitting for this particular character I'm playing. Sterling reputation, more f stuff that we can buy and sell. Discount on goods, I don't really tend to buy a lot of stuff. I tend to just find stuff and then uh, dish it out. Rare and valuable stuff. Uh, 
da, da, da. I might do uh, that one for increased defenses because my god do we need it. There we go. DM Chromie, Baldur's Gate 3 isn't going to be released until the fall according to Larian and that's them wish wishfully thinking. I hope I can build a new PC before it's fully out. Honestly, uh, Chromie, the fact that it's even like slated to get a release roughly this year is already like great news um because the early access already is amazing uh so and they've been regularly working on it over the past uh ve i'll just say very long time so honestly with what i've seen so far i'm happy to wait as long as they need uh to complete the game to its uh fullest potential but oh i i can't wait to play it i can't wait to play the finished game hmm. Very true. I can already imagine Steph spending a lot of time with a star in. Am I that predictable? <laughs> like, I know what I like, okay? And um, I just really like a star in. God damn it. Oh, look, uh, stuff to turn in. Um, strike a bargain with the Merchant Princes. A bundle of documents, at least 50 pages thick, explains the trade agreement the Inquisition has entered into with the Merchant Princes of Antiva. Josephine has attached a note. Inquisitor, I am more than satisfied with the agreement we reached with the Merchant Princes. Here is a duplicate if you wish to review it. I would put aside three days and two dozen candles. Ambassador Montillier. Thank you very much, Josephine. Hinterland resources from Cullen. Our shipment of resources from the Hinterlands has arrived. Hell yes. Dorian's request. Dorian's leads were effective. The Inquisition found several locations where these Venatori could be hiding. Advanced camps, purpose unknown. If you wish to deal with these mages, I'm certain Dorian would be pleased. I'll mark the locations on your map should you pass any on your travels. Hell yes. Okay, let's uh, send some more of these out. Oh, look, I just, I just really like doing Josephine's accent, okay? And it's something I'm trying to practice a little. All right, Ruffles. First off, you play a mean hand of wicked grace. Second, the lead you dug up for me is finding this uh, Bell and Forth guy in Kirkall. It's starting to show some promise. I got my editor to look around for me. She's a coder uh, coterie boss, so people tell her things whether they want to or not. She dragged down the poor sod carrying the manuscripts out of Kirkhall. This is where it gets weird. The courier is a magistrate, magistrate Lord uh, Werner Cameron. The coterie, coterie went touching with a ten-foot pole. Maybe you can have a polite word with him for me. Varric. We have a pick my voice from Samwell. Then practice. Well, Samuel, I could certainly endeavor to do that. Let us send Liliana on this mission. A magistrate courier? He has to be involved in something else. Let's find out what. Let's see what we have. All right, let's see who else we can send out on missions in the meantime. Reports on Darkspawn activity? There are reports of Darkspawn activity on the Storm Coast. While the area is sparsely populated, the Darkspawn poses a significant threat to travelers, as well as to Inquisition soldiers stationed on the coast. Should the Darkspawn branch away from the region, villagers further inland may be at risk. The Darkspawn are emerging from underground. Our soldiers can sweep the area to determine where they are the most concentrated. Sounds good to me, to Colin. Work. I trust you with this. And let us send uh, Josephine, the lovely Josephine, off to take care of some other things. Uh, let's see, what was the one that we were looking at? This is one that we need to do for a long time. Part of a Ben Hasrat report containing, uh, noting the current spite for succession in Leeds, which has been without a direct ruler since Duke Ramash died early in the Orlesian Civil War. The Dushi will go uh, to one of three members of the dead Duke's family, all of whom have possible claims to the position due to the complex nature of Elysian politics. His cousin Carava, uh, Carlina, already a duchess by marriage, his daughter Monette, whose claim is muddied by her youthful naivete and the fact that her father pushed her into a life of, sur of surface to the Chantry after his wife's death, likely to protect her from the dangers of the game, and his brother Jean de Gaspard, 
an ambitious and cunning man who has been searching for power. Carolina is capable and, but, and not overly invested in overseeing Leeds personally. Monette would be most easily manipulated, but less likely to be useful. Jean Gaspard would be difficult to manipulate and could present a, thre a threat if he succeeds his brother. Any of the three candid candidates could become a valuable ally to the Inquisition, but the other two must be removed from play first. Uh, Josephine, I can destroy Carolina's marriage with four words and the proper glove left on the proper table. Let us begin. Let us send you off then, my dear. Alrighty then. Alright, so. I know I said that we would do Wicked Eyes and Wicked Hearts this evening but as we are starting to run a little late and i apologize for this this was my own error um due to a slight hiccup that i had uh during tonight's game it seems that we will have to wait just a little longer before we head to the elysian courts but that is okay because it gives us time to prepare Why don't we have a quick word with some of our wonderful comrades? Your Worship. Varric, how are you? Corivius is back. Oh, shit. If you and Hawk defeated him once, we can do it again. We didn't just think Corivius was dead. He was dead. No pulse, no breath, full of stab wounds. There wasn't a lot of room for doubt makes me wonder. I thought the Wardens imprisoned Corypheus to use him. Maybe they did it because he can't be killed. There has to be a way to defeat Corypheus. We'll find it. Don't worry. I hope you're right. Baker's breath, what have I let loose? You had nothing to do with this, Varric. I was the one who led Hawk to Corypheus. If I hadn't tracked the Carta to that ruin. But you've got more important things to do than listen to me worry. Just let me know when you want something shot. Varric is a valuable member, even if uh, Cassandra sometimes thinks otherwise. Let us see how the others Inquisitor. are faring. Stefan finally died. Cassandra, how are you, my dear? So I can keep staring at this, but I won't get any closer. Something I can help you with? Yes. Possibly. We saw so many Red Templars at the assault on Haven. Perhaps all that was left of the Order. What we didn't see was Lord Seeker Lucius. Indeed, I've seen no hint of any Seekers amongst the Red Templars, or anywhere. I have a growing suspicion Corypheus has imprisoned them. Why imprisoned? He could just as easily have killed them. Not easily. But yes, they may be dead. But the Seekers began this war against the Mages. They cannot have simply vanished. There must be a trail we can follow, yet so far I have only discovered hints. But they could have ended up just like the Red Templars. Seekers do not use lyrium. I assume Corypheus gained control of the Templars by corrupting the lyrium they were already taking. To do the same to a Seeker, you'd have to force the lyrium upon him. That may be what happened, but it couldn't have begun that way. We're missing a piece of the puzzle, Inquisitor. I need to find it. Finding them obviously means a lot to you. I left the Order, but I can never abandon them. I cannot even claim that rescuing them would be beneficial. They wouldn't look kindly on the Inquisition. But even so, if there's a chance... If we can spare resources to follow up on these leads, Inquisitor, I would appreciate it. Of course, Cassandra. 
I'm sure we can make that happen for you. You've done a great service to the Inquisition. Oh, chat, you are too kind. I must confess I have a great amount of fun with this accent. If you're also uh, perhaps familiar uh, with the series uh, The Unexpectables, this accent is also rather similar to the one used by a certain Panic Grimton. Another character that I am especially fond of. So, Josephine, do you think Cullen is like a golden retriever? He is... Perhaps in ways where he is caught off his guard. He certainly has a softer side to him that he lets few of us see, but... He is much more of a very, very protective hound in many capabilities. Fierce and loyal in innumerable ways. But there is a softness to him as well. That I see sometimes. Dorian, darling, how are you? Anything interesting? A letter regarding Felix, Alexius's son. He went to the Magisterium, stood on the Senate floor, and told them of you. A glowing testimonial, I'm informed. No news on the reaction, but everyone back home is talking. Felix always was as good as his word. Was? He's dead. Oh. The Blight caught up with him. Are you alright? He was ill, and thus on borrowed time anyhow. That doesn't mean you can't regret his death. I know. Felix used to sneak me treats from the kitchens when I was working late in his father's study. Don't get into trouble on my behalf, I tell him. I like trouble, he'd say. Tevinter could use more mages like him. Those who put the good of others above themselves. Were the two of you... Felix and I? What an odd question. No, I had no intention of abusing Alexius's hospitality by seducing his son. Not that I've been proper my whole life by any means. It wasn't like that. Even in illness, Felix was the best of us. With him around, you knew things could be better. You make it sound like he was a better person than you. What a mad thing to say. <laughs> Few people are better than I. Very well, a better person, clearly, not nearly as handsome. Humble as always, Dorian. Thankfully, Felix wasn't the only decent sort kicking around Fadus. I just love all these little moments with members of the Inquisition. Alright, I already turned in my research. Um, let's just see if perhaps uh, Solus wants to have a quick word with us. And then I think I will wrap things up for the evening. And then next time we play, I promise we will do uh, uh, Wicked Eyes and Wicked Hearts, okay? Well. Thank you for the stretch check, Rosen Online. And we do come the end to the end of this particular Pick My Voice. Thank you so much, Samuel. I have a lot of fun with this accent. And yes, we will have to have a conversation, Solus, about uh, that dream that I experienced. I've never done anything like that before, on a number of levels. <laughs> I apologize. The kiss was impulsive and ill-considered, and I should not have encouraged it. You say that, but you're the one who started with tongue. I did no such thing. <laughs> oh, does it not count if it's only fade tongue? It has been a long time, and things have always been easier for me in the fade. I am not certain this is the best idea. It could lead to trouble. I'll risk it, though. I'm willing to take that chance, if you are. I... maybe... Yes. 
If I could take a little time to think. There are considerations. Take all the time you need. Thank you. I am not often thrown by things that happen in dreams, but I am reasonably certain we are awake now. And if you wish to discuss anything, I would enjoy talking. I'd be interested in hearing your opinions on elven culture. Perhaps you could ask Sarah. She has opinions. If I wanted Sarah's opinions, I'd be talking to her. And learning some colorful new idioms, no doubt. What do you wish to know? Are all Dalish elves like my clan? No. Your clan was unique in having enough interest in human affairs to send you to spy upon the Divine's meeting. As your clans have been separate for so long, they have all changed, adapting to the lands in which they live. Some are no more than bandits. Others trade freely with humans. And some have disappeared entirely into the forests. Solus is an introvert with an extrovert girlfriend that's really into him. You know what? That is very fair. I imagine, like, he's just was so... Because he's in false state, he was very, like, used to isolating uh, himself. And then just he just gets wrangled up in the Inquisition. And the Inquisitor, if you choose the romance path, is pretty much like, I really like you. I, I mean, I, I really like you. And he's like, I am very confused. I have very all over the place emotions. Tell me about elves living in human cities? The I like it, though. The or among the slaves of Devinter is like any of the impoverished and powerless. They cling to memories of a better past and practice a few rituals to distinguish themselves from humans. We'll talk later. Goodbye. What's up? My lady Inquisitor, it's good of you to speak with me. I have news regarding one of your companions. The De Winter. Is that a note of distaste I detect, Mother Giselle? I... admit his presence here makes me uncomfortable, Inquisitor. But my feelings are of no importance. I have been in contact with his family. House Pavas, out of Carinus. Are you familiar with them? Familiar? We've never met, if that's what you're suggesting. I'm suggesting nothing. I'm only curious whether or you know of his situation. The family sent a letter describing the estrangement from their son and pleading for my aid. They've asked to arrange a meeting quietly without telling him. They fear it's the only way he'll come. Since you seem to be on good terms with the young man, I'd hoped. I'm not going to trick Dorian. If his family wants to meet with him and they're not on good terms, he needs complete clarity because I do not deceive my friends. If you think I'm going to trick Dorian into meeting his family, oh, I feared you might say that. The family will send a retainer to meet the young man at the Red Cliff Temple to take him onward. If he truly does not wish this reunion, he can always end the matter there. I pray you change your mind, Inquisitor. Perhaps their letter will persuade you. If there is any chance of success in this, it behooves us to act. You know what? Fuck it. I want to do this quest before I wrap things up for tonight because, especially since we've been talking to Dorian just now, um, it's good if we kind of wrap, like, do this moment now while it's fresh in my mind before we get into the next stream and then I forget. Official looking letter. Your reverence, I understand that you feel inadequate to the task of bringing Dorian to a secret meeting. Even in the asking, I find it difficult to believe myself. Considering my son has rebuffed all contact, this is the only way. I know him. He would be too proud to come if, we, if he knew, even just to talk. That is all we wish to do. The thought of Dorian in the south, placing himself in the path of such danger, alarms us more than I can express. If this somehow succeeds, we have a family retainer at the Vandral Hills watching for Dorian's arrival. He will bring the boy to us, somewhere private. If Dorian utterly refuses to go with him, it ends there, and there is nothing we can do. We are at our wit's end. 
Graciously yours, Magister Howard of House Parvis. Just while it's fresh in my mind, I want to do this quest because it's relatively quick. It's more of a series of cutscenes, but it's very good. And we all love Dorian. Dorian, I have a letter for you. So I take it you're... Dalish? Is that the correct word here? Yes, that's right. We don't have Dalish clans coming northward, for obvious reasons. So I've never met one of your people before, although I've heard about them. Little. I hope this won't be an issue between us. I am here to help you deal with the Venatori, after all. And I appreciate your help, Dorian. Excellent. Mutual appreciation is a grand way to begin. Your father sent a letter. Dorian, there's a letter you need to see. A letter? Is it a naughty letter? A humorous <laughs> proposal from some Antivan dowager? Not quite. It's from your father. From my father? I see. And what does Magister Hallward want, pray tell? A meeting. Show me this letter. I know my son? What my father knows of me would barely fill a thimble. This is so typical. I'm willing to bet this retainer is a henchman hired to knock me on the head and drag me back to Tevinta. You think your father would actually do that? No. Although I wouldn't put it past him. Let's go. Let's meet this so-called family retainer. If it's a trap, we escape and kill everyone. You're good <laughs> at that. If it's not, I send the man back to my father with the message that he can stick his alarm in his wit's end. There seems to be bad blood between you and your family. <laughs> Interesting turn of phrase. But you're correct. They don't care for my choices, nor I for theirs. Because you wouldn't get married? Because you left? That too. All right, let's go. Let's go meet this retainer then. I wonder how much my father paid this man to wait around just in case I showed. <sighs> we'll find out soon enough. This is re a relatively quick quest, so... Take care of this, have a chat with Dorian, and, uh... Then wrap things up for tonight. Yep, we're just taking Dorian with us. We have the Dorian fan club chat. It's because, as it has been well established, we have great taste. <laughs> Perhaps we should search about a bit. Even before the sky fell open, this was a land of spirits and demons. Magic grows wild in the hills. Come along, Dorian. Well, this can only go well. Uh-oh. Nobody's here. This doesn't bode well. Dorian. Father. So the whole story about the family retainer was just, what? A smokescreen? Then you were told. I apologize for the deception, Inquisitor. I never intended for you to be involved. Of course not. Magister Parvis couldn't come to Skyhold and be seen with the dread Inquisitor. What would people think? What is this exactly, Father? Ambush? Kidnapping? A warm family reunion? <sighs> this is how it has always been. You went through all of this to get Dorian here. Talk to him. Yes, father. Talk to me. 
Let me hear how mystified you are by my anger. Dorian, there's no need to. I prefer the company of men. My father disapproves. That's a big concern in Tevinter, then. Only if you're trying to live up to an impossible standard. Every Tevinter family is intermarrying to distill the perfect mage, perfect body, perfect mind. The perfect leader. It means every perceived flaw, every aberration is deviant and shameful. It must be hidden. So that's what all of this is about. Who you sleep with. That's not all it's about. Dorian, please. If you'll only listen to me. Why? So you can spout more convenient lies? He taught me to hate blood magic. The resort of the weak mind. Those are his words. But what was the first thing you did when your precious heir refused to play pretend for the rest of his life? You tried to change me. I only wanted what was best for you. Fuck you off. The best for you. For your fucking legacy. Anything for that. Don't leave it like this, Dorian. You'll never forgive yourself. Tell me why you came. If I knew, I would drive you to the Inquisition. You didn't. I joined the Inquisition because it's the right thing to do. Once, I had a father who would have known that. Once, I had a son who trusted me. A trust I betrayed. I only wanted to talk to him, to hear his voice again. ...to ask him to forgive me. Okay. So, it sounds like I didn't have to burn the tavern down. Which is promising. Like, I'm not saying that the conversation would have gone well, but... There... It looked like it was going well. Hi, Dorian. He says we're alike. Too much pride. Once I would have been overjoyed to hear him say that. Now I'm not certain. I don't know if I can forgive him. Are you all right? No, not really. Thank you for bringing me out there. It wasn't what I expected, but it's something. Maker knows what you must think of me now, after that whole display. Um, you did leave me on just a little bit. I think you led me on, actually. Ah, the flirting. You're a remarkable woman, Inquisitor. I mean that in the best way. In another life, I meant no offense. I'll desist if you prefer. No harm done. Now we can be friends. I'd like that. At any rate, time to drink myself into a stupor. <laughs> it's been that sort of day. Mm -hmm. Join me sometime, if you've a mind. Absolutely, Dorian. Absolutely. Well, I think that went exceptionally well given the circumstances. So I'm going to let Dorian have his space, but I felt just because we had a couple of interactions with Dorian today. And you know what? We didn't do... Um, uh, wicked uh, eyes, wicked hearts. But you know what? We had some amazing moments uh, tonight. But I think this is a perfect point to wrap things up for this evening. So before I forget, I will save. So I always forget to do that. Oh, but I'm that went surprisingly well. Um, understandably, Dorian has a lot of very mixed feelings on it, and that is his matter to deal with in his own time. But considering what the conversation was about I think that went relatively well but next Friday I promise we will do uh, Wicked Eyes Wicked Hearts 
and hopefully I won't screw things up again like I did tonight with accidentally spending too much power in uncovering new areas to explore but I'll keep that in mind for next time and hopefully you guys can join me next Friday for more Dragon Age Inquisition but now is a perfect time to wrap things up for this evening thank you all so very much for joining me tonight if you've been lurking in the shadows and you like what you've seen so far please consider following we would love to have you back at the Blue Rose Respite you're welcome anytime be sure to check out my other socials in the chat uh, my twitter for important updates my youtube for my asmr tales and my instagram for lovely pictures and other such fun things but let us see uh who's currently streaming let's give some love to deckard games shall we be sure to give them plenty of love from me stephanie swan quills and the blue rose respite and thank you all so very much for joining me this evening and yes we will be continuing dragon age inquisition next friday and be sure to join me on sunday for witchwood as well i believe we're getting to the very end of that game i think we may even be wrapping things up for that game this Sunday just because we only have two more souls to collect but we'll just see how things go because it's a very chill game we have a lot of fun with it and I cannot wait to see you guys on Sunday but thank you all so much for joining me tonight I had so much fun I hope you all did as well and remember oh before I uh, give my final farewells a huge huge thank you to each and every one of you who gifted subs, who renew their subscriptions, thank you so, so much. You're absolutely amazing. And I hugely appreciate your, uh, your generosity and your support. Thank you. But let us say farewell. And remember, take care of yourselves, take care of each other. And as always, stay wicked and wonderful. Good night, guys. <laughs>